Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare an early 1940s day dress pattern to be cut out of fabric in real life. Preparing your patterns for production helps you and your team understand how garments are meant to be assembled. This tutorial covers finishing details, marking techniques, and export settings that will ensure a smooth transition from Clothe 3D to cutting table. Check out my Patreon in the description below for the project files used in this tutorial, as well as a written step-by-step -step guide, project ideas, and one-on-one -on -one support for advancing your skills. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and open our project file. So file, open, project, navigate to where you saved the file from my Patreon on your computer and double click marking and exporting project. And you can see we have a cute, early 1940s day dress that I've already patterned, I've already fit it, I've already trued it, and it's ready for the pattern to be exported. But before we do that, we want to add some crucial markings that's going to help us sew this back together once it's cut out. So the first thing we're going to do here is add notches to all of these curved seams so that we can uh, put them back together accurately. So what I'm going to do is go to the walk pattern tool, which is right here. And I'll show you what you do with this tool. So we're going to just click it and then we'll start maybe here at the, the, the center front piece. Um, I'm going to click uh, on the side front, this arm's eye point just once. And then I'm going to click the corresponding point that it will be sewn to on the front. And then the kind of shadow of the side front appears. And what I need to do is walk my cursor along this seam right here and it shows where the pattern will meet. And I think I wanna put a notch maybe right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and it says add notch to intersection. You could either add it to the walked pattern to, which is the, the one that's just the outline right now, the stationary pattern, which in this case is the front pattern or both patterns, which is what I'm gonna click. Once you've right clicked and added the notch, you just press enter and that pattern goes back to where it came from. And I just wanna say that this is also a great tool for truing the curves, especially around the arm's eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and with the tool still selected, I'm clicking those two points again. And if I just walk it just a little bit and I right click, move walked pattern to intersection. And then I can go ahead and use the edit pattern tool and adjust my Bezier curves to make that nice and smooth. Smooth. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that today though because I did it to this pattern already before we began but now you know how to do it all right the next thing is just to keep working your way around with the walked pattern tool uh, right here and uh, keep adding notches as you go around so maybe in the side seam we'll add one right here and then we'll add one right here and as I'm going around I am adding an increasing amount of notches and that's gonna help you when they're all together, you know, and cut out and they all look exactly the same, especially these, you know, this piece and this piece, that'll help uh, us match them back up again. And so that's just a little a little bit of a trick that you can use there. Um, all right, but true here to here and right click uh, both patterns. Let's add three here, both patterns, both patterns. All right, and then press enter and it'll go back. You're welcome to add as many notches uh, on these patterns that you think will be helpful for your team. I'm gonna show you a different way to add notches as well. The first thing we're gonna do, and this is maybe seem a little weird, but we're gonna go to the edit sewing tool or the B hot key. And what that does is just, it shows us the seam lines, which I want because on the sleeve, it's showing, for example, here's where this sleeve attaches to the side front. Here's where it attaches to the center front. And because there's so much gathering in the cap of this sleeve, that's going to help us match that back up. But I can see the point, for example, this is the orange seam, the orange seam, or sorry, blue seam and blue seam, orange seam and orange seam. So right in between these two seams is going to be this point and this point. So when these are sewn together, I'm going to want to notch here to line those back up to. And so I just have to just have to go to the, the notch tool, which is right here. 
and click that and then um, I'll just zoom in and I'll just put a single notch right there where those seams line up. I'd also like one at the top here where and that's where the shoulder seam lines up and um, so this is the front, this is the back and then the same thing on the back, this seam connects to um, the this side and then here we are at the, the, at the center back. So I'm gonna put actually uh, two notches here for the same kind of reason that um, we will remember that the two notches lines up to the back and the one notch lines up to the front. Now that we're notched, let's go ahead and add a button placket to the entire center front of this dress. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Z hotkey or the edit pattern tool, and I'm going to right click. It doesn't matter at which side of the center front I click, just right click. And then I'm going to say offset pattern outline. And that's going to bring up a window that's giving me an option of how much beyond what the original center front line I want to basically add another line and that's going to be the extension for my button placket uh my grown-on button placket so direction let's say extend because if you say retract it will go actually into the pattern which we don't want and then distance i think i want a button placket of a half of an inch so type that there and then number of offsets one you can keep clicking this and it'll just you know make additional lines that at increments of a uh, half of an inch but we only want one so leave that one all right side segment type this is this is actually um talking about this uh right now because the the line that used to be there is going down and right now it's saying uh let's go perpendicular um so it's squaring it off but i think it would be a lot cuter if we extended it and then continued this nice curve into our button placket so let's click extend and with that let's go ahead and click ok now this is a fun tool the next tool we're going to use is the button tool and the button tool exists in the 3d window so right here is the button tool and that is the tool for adding buttons there's also a tool for editing buttons um, which is right above it and then the one below it is actually the tool for buttoning the buttons and uh, I just want to say too that if you hold down on the button tool you have the button hole tool uh, which we won't actually need because we're going to do some witchcraft and make the button holes appear exactly where we want them so on the right front pattern on this extended line so actually it gave you a guideline where the center front was so that was very nice let's right click and just on that line and we're going to say oh sorry with the button tool selected right click and we're going to say uh, type based on start so we're going to actually create a whole line of buttons just based off of this extended line distance we're going to say 0.5 and that's saying the distance from the edge which since we extended the button plug it 0.5 inches out we're going to try to put it back right on center so 0.5 and then interval this is saying how far away from the top is this starting so let's say maybe two inches from the top all right now down here we have replicate which means we can add keep adding buttons and i think we want eight buttons and we want them to be four inches oops, not 45 inches four inches apart okay let's type it eight and then click OK. So then our buttons appear on the side of the dress that we want the buttons to appear, just all eight, four inches apart. And to make the buttonholes, all we have to do is go to the edit, or I guess it's select move button, click that, and then right click these buttons and then say duplicate as buttonhole to symmetric pattern. And that's how you mark out your buttons and your buttonholes. Now, if you want to be really fancy, you can button these together. The first thing we want to do is delete our center front seam because we don't need it anymore since we have buttons. So let's go to the edit sewing tool or the B hot key. Just click this center front seam and press delete. And now it's gone. The next thing we want to do is ask Clo 3 d to layer the left side over the right side. So to do that, we're going to go to, what is this tool called? It's, um, oh, it's right here and it is the oh, set sub layer and so we're just going to click the left side 
and then click the right side and this little plus sign is telling us that this is going over this and you can easily swap it by just hitting minus and you can also just click the arrow and delete it but i'm gonna go ahead and grab that grab that plus sign and now it knows how to layer the the two layers on top of each other to get out of this window just press another tool so for example the transform pattern tool or the a hotkey now let's go ahead and button the buttons. So that is this tool over here, the fasten button tool. And you can just click and drag over all of the buttons. And you can see when you do that, it selects them with these arrows. And all you have to do is point to the buttonholes you want them to be buttoned to, and then click. And they are buttoned and you can tell they're buttoned because the little lock just appeared here. All right, now let's see if it worked. Let's go ahead and simulate. All right, I'm gonna grab the Q tool and just kind of fuss around a little bit here. Um, but it looks like, oh, it's it's a, looks like pretty good. If your buttons are just disappeared or look really weird, um, go ahead and stop simulation, grab the select move button tool, um, command A, and then right click reset 3D position, and it'll put them back where they need to go. And that usually fixes things. Okay, so we've got a little bit of gapping here, but I don't actually want to put another button there because it, I like the way the buttons are placed. I think it's cute. So we can go ahead and put a tack to help minimize the, the gaposis right, right here, uh, or just underneath the bust. And to do that, in the 3D window, there is the, the uh, tack button, and that's right here. And uh, if you click down on the tap button, or attack button, it, you can also tack on avatar, which is very handy if you just wanna like glue something to the avatar. But right now we actually just wanna tack, like pin uh, the garment to itself. So let's click tack. And then right here in this gap, um, just right about here, let's go ahead and click on one pattern and then click around the same area on the other pattern. And it's telling it to then tack that together. Um, and since you've told which one's on top, it remembered, so. One really cool feature of Clo 3 d is just the fact that you can mark something on your 2D pattern and then see where the placement lands on your 3D pattern. So one way this is really useful is for marking applique placement. So I've included an image of an applique in the folder downloaded from Patreon. And to place it on the pattern, you're going to go over here to the graphic 2D pattern. It looks like a t-shirt with a uh, checkerboard on it. It's going to open up a dialog window that you can navigate on your computer to the same folder that the project file was in and double click marking and exporting graphic this little flower here and once you've clicked that it just says click on a pattern to add graphic so i'm going to go ahead and click i think i want it on the shoulder of this pattern and i have already scaled this uh, one to one on the exact uh, applique that exists in real life. So you can go ahead and click OK. And once it's on your pattern, you can see it shows up in the 3D window. You can just click on it. It automatically set you to the transform graphic tool over here. And you can um, just use this little gizmo here to rotate or scale or do or move around or do what you need to do until you get it into a spot that you think is pleasing. Okay, I think that's pretty cute. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my uh, taped seams so that I can see a little bit better. And yeah, that's very pretty. And once you have it where you like it with that same edit or transform graphic tool selected, just right click and then duplicate to symmetric pattern. And it'll mirror it and duplicate it to the other side, which is great because this uh, applique comes in a mirrored set. The next thing I want to do is draft facings for this pattern so that there, we have all of the pieces we need to make a completed garment. So to do that, I'm going to go to the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey. And while holding shift, I'm just going to click along my center front, all of these cute little curvy lines and the center front line and, uh, or I guess it's the offset, the button packet line and with all of those selected on um, right click one of the sides and then offset as internal line and a window will pop up and it's pretty much the same thing as offset pattern outline except now we're working with the inside of the pattern and I want my facing to be three inches wide so I'm going to go ahead and click three number of offsets one distance all 
I don't know what individual does. And then option is we do want to extend this. And if we click reverse direction, it does like, it, it basically offsets the pattern line and then click okay. This looks pretty good, but I want to delete some of these extra points here because this is kind of an ob obnoxious line. So with the edit pattern tool selected, I just selected anywhere in the 2D window to deselect. Click that point, click backspace or delete, click this point, backspace or delete. And that is a much more uh, pleasing facing pattern. And to trace this off, we're going to use the trace pattern tool or, or the I hotkey. And I'm just gonna click all of the the lines that I want to be the included in this pattern. And it's okay that this one, for example, extends beyond. It will understand because it's going to try to make a complete shape. So including the bottom, don't forget these little areas here with that extension. And with all of those lines selected, you're going to right click trace as a pattern and then click anywhere in the 2D window and you have your facing. I'm actually only going to draft one of these because uh, the next in a couple steps, we're going to delete half of our patterns to prepare for printing. Um, and I'm not going to try to sew it into my 3D garment here. So I'm just going to have one ready to go. And we're going to then repeat the same process on the back. So on the back, I'm going to go to the edit pattern tool, right click, offset as internal line. It remembered that I wanted three inches. Okay. And then using our tracing tool or the I hotkey, shift click all of these lines, right click, trace as a pattern, and we have our back facing. Next, I wanna show you how to add seam allowances to your patterns. And you might like to not add seam allowances to your patterns, but it is helpful to do in Clo because when if you do add them, you can then estimate how much fabric you need to buy. And if you're like me, you usually forget to account for th three or four inches of hem allowance or a center back allowance. So to add seam allowance, we're going to go to the seam allowance tool. And with that tool selected, we're just going to click in the 2D window and then control or command A, or you can click and drag to select all the patterns. And then in the property editor, it's giving you the width of the seam allowance and they default, I think, to three centimeters, um, but we're gonna go ahead and click that and put 0.5 or whatever seam allowance you want for most of your pattern. And that looks pretty good, it added it accurately. And if you wanna add more seam allowance in certain areas, for example, hem allowance, then all you have to do is uh, shift to click all of the hems. Even if it's a symmetrical pattern, you still have to click all of them. Um, and then let's change that to maybe three inches. Uh, I don't want my sleeves to have three inches, so click those and let's say maybe 1.5 inches. Notice something weird it did here at the hems right at the center front. Oh, 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 I see it. I didn't add it right there to three inches, so let's change that. Three inches there and on the facing as well. I'll show you a couple different ways to add annotation to the patterns. So first, if I go to the transform pattern tool and I select any pattern, you can see that under information, I've already named this one side front right underscore right. Uh, and you can export with the names of the patterns, but it doesn't always look the way that you want it to. So if you want to have more control about how your uh, pattern naming conventions exist, then you can go to the um, pattern annotation tool right here. And with that tool selected, you just click anywhere on a pattern and you type in side front. Um, let's go and you type in front. You can add other annotations as well. If you want to edit them or move them around, you have, of course, the edit annotation tool. All right, I think we're finally ready to export. So before we do that, let's go ahead and like I mentioned, we're gonna delete half of our patterns. So since I have this facing and this facing, um, let's go ahead, I'll delete this side, this side, um, there, there. Oh yeah, this is nice. I like to keep just one side of the pattern so it's a little bit easier to put back together. To help us with laying out our pattern for printing, we're going to actually go to the pattern layout mode. And so this is a new window. This is up here uh, where it says simulation. We can actually switch uh, the mode to an entirely different type of workspace. So if you click simulation and you can see there's animation, print layout, emulator, modular, UV editor, 
all sorts of fun things, but let's go to print layout for now. And it'll pull up this, um, your pattern and this square, which is representing the fabric that you're going to cut it out of. And right now it thinks the fabric is 42 inches, which is fine. If you want to change that, you can go to fabric, just click it in the object browser. And then in the property uh, in the property editor, go to width and right now it says custom and I have it set to 42 inches. It gives you some common lengths, um, but you're going to want to set it to the the size that you want your PDF to be that you're exporting. Um, well, actually, first you can set it to the width of your fabric and press play right up here is the uh, play button. And it's going to think through the most economical way to cut out this pattern, which is very handy. And actually, if you do this with, before you delete everything or half of your pattern, then you'll have a more accurate um, example. But essentially, I know I'll at least need four yards to cut this out twice. Um, so very convenient. But once you've got that figured out, you're going to want to change the fabric width to the width of your paper. So for me, if I'm printing on a plotter, I know that my plotter prints 42 inches, but I actually like to make it 41 inches to give myself margin on my plotter. If you are using a projector to project your patterns directly onto your fabric, then I recommend using the actual width of your fabric. And that way you can just scroll around and you will already have the most economic layout pre-prepared. If you're going to tile your pattern on a home printer, for example, eight and a half by 11, then what you'd want to do is think about about how many pieces of paper wide do you want? So if you're doing it portrait mode, you do, and here's some math, eight and a half, if you wanted it five wide, eight and a half times five is 42 and a half. And then you want to actually type in a little bit less because if you did exactly 42 and a half, the next step, it's going to give you a whole additional piece of paper, which is annoying. So I generally, 42 is a pretty good number for if you want five wide and you're going to tile on a printer. So the next thing you want to do once it's all laid out is click this button right here, which is the snapshot button. Once you click that, this window will open up and I'm zoomed way in. Let me zoom out. And you can see I, right now I have an option uh, to preset A4 paper. These tiny little like dot dashed lines are showing me how that kind of s spreads out. So if it's like annoying that this piece is going to be on two pieces of paper, I can, you know, rotate it and shift it so that, um, it's like I don't have to paste together two pieces of paper just to cut out that facing. And don't worry about the grain lines because over here in the options, you can see it says show lines and it's giving you all of these options. So graphic lines, internal lines. So the internal line is those lines right there, um, base lines and notches, pattern outlines, um, the seam allowance, you can make that disappear if you decide you don't want it. Um, and if you click through these, you can pretty much see exactly what you want. I'm going to actually click show images because that's where our applique uh, uh, layout is. And then show additional information. There's just, uh, that's where you would have pattern names. And so I'll put that there, but because I didn't actually annotate all of my patterns, um, but here's the pattern annotations. Um, and then et cetera, et cetera. Let's keep green lines on pattern names off. Okay, but I do want to change, show you the different options. So up here it says preset. We have a letter, which is what I would use since I have a letter printer. And you can see um, it, it's showing you how the letter uh, paper is going to break up here. I just want to move that there. And what you would do if you wanted to print this is just click save. And then it's asking where do you want to save it? pick a place that you can find it again and then you're right here very important where it says save as type you're going to want to click that and change it to a pdf and then click save oh actually name it first um printer pattern that's vague okay all right uh, i'm going to go back to the snapshot to show you just a few other settings. Uh, letter is how you'd want to use if you're going to tile it, uh, but I would actually just use one to one if I'm going to either print it on a plotter and I've already set my plotter width, 
or if I'm going to use a projector and I've set my fabric width, just use one to one and it will export um, the exact this like outer square and it'll be one to one. So when you print it, it'll be good to go. I just want to show you when I open the pattern in Adobe Acrobat and I do control command P to print. Uh, the printer dialog for printing tiles is this right here. It says poster. That's how you can uh, print it in a tiled form. I will say if I'm going to be using an eight and a half by 11 printer, I like to bring it into Adobe Illustrator and add margins and clean everything up. But that is beyond the scope of this tutorial today.